All right, people, let's get into it. We're back with some more Benjamin Moore. And the subject color in this video is the immensely popular Cedar Key. This could be one of your best options to paint the inside of your home with. And there are a number of reasons for that. We're gonna go over some of those in this video, but not only that, I've also prepared an entire color palette based around Cedar Key, all within Benjamin Moore's paint catalog. That way you'll be equipped to at least have a really awesome starting point on your own color selection quest. I know picking colors can be pretty stressful, right? But if we think of it as a fun quest, it's gotta be more enjoyable, right? Hopefully as enjoyable as showing me support by clicking that like button before we get started. That way YouTube knows we're making some of the dopest painting and decorating content on the web. At least I hope we are. So let's get started with Cedar Key. We can look at its color codes and I use the plural tense because it has two OC-16 and 982. Whichever code you go with, they both represent Cedar Key. But the one that I want to bring to your attention is the OC one because OC is Benjamin Moore's off-white collection of paint colors. And it contains a ton of other really popular light colors like Cedar Key. The one thing that I do want to point out though is I wouldn't necessarily classify Cedar Key as a true off-white. It has a little too much depth for me. It's a bit darker than what I would call an off-white, especially when you compare it to Chantilly Lace, which is pretty much as bright as you can get. And we can even get into more detail by talking about the light reflectance value of both of these colors, which essentially is their lightness score. And out of 100, Cedar Key is nearly 30 points darker than Chantilly Lace. That doesn't sound like an off-white to me. That sounds more like, maybe a light mid-tone paint color. And there's nothing wrong with light mid-tones. In fact, Cedar Key has around a 61 LRV, which is actually pretty awesome for wall colors. I think one of the reasons it might have scraped by into the off-white collection is because its undertones, they're pretty subtle overall. Even though it's pretty dark to be classified as a white, it's at least passive like a white color would be. If I were to classify it myself, I would probably say that it's a light soft beige and that softness comes from a dash of taupe or a hint of brown and gray. You're not really getting a strong gold or yellow undertone here. It's a little more browny orange. That sounds delicious, actually. What's cool, though, is brown and orange, they're actually part of the same color family, which not a lot of people know about. Just a fun fact. I think Cedar Key gives you the best of both worlds as a color. It's not straight up creamy beige. Do you like Bailey's? Creamy, sour, creamy beige. That would feel a bit out of place in more contemporary homes, but it also has a touch of that soft, woody warmth that coordinates really nicely with a more traditional design expression. This is absolutely a phenomenal choice as an all over the house interior color, which I know a lot of you are looking for because less is more after all. Although you can also use it as an exterior color outside if you wanted to. There it'll feel way closer to an off-white because of how powerful the sun is as a light source. Who would have thought, right? But even though you could technically have this as the one paint color inside your home, that doesn't mean I would recommend that. Obviously, I would want you to at least consider these five other colors that I worked so hard to coordinate with Cedar Key. At least give them a shot, will ya? The first color is River Reflections, which is interestingly described as a cool brown hue. Cool brown, you don't often hear that. It's a deepening of that slight taupe nuance within Cedar Key, although taken to a much deeper level with a 35 LRV. That's a lot darker. This may be darker than some of you would be comfortable going with in the larger parts of your home, but don't be shy to consider this color for places like bedrooms, the living room, an office, you get the picture. We also have another neutral that sort of moves a little bit away from that orange vibe that's found in Cedar Key to a more rouge gray direction aka Gruge. The color is called Elephant Gray, and especially next to River Reflections, you really do notice that bit of violet coming through, which really is more of a red undertone that is sort of combining with gray to give you that beautiful, rich je ne sais quoi. I really don't know how to describe it. Technically, Elephant Gray is a bit lighter than River Reflections, but I would place them on the same sort of level, meaning I would give them the same weighting in the overall color scheme. Maybe one will work better than the other in a specific room. If you wanted elephant gray to blend in a little bit more, for example, and not really complement too hard, 
then have it in a room with elements that share its red, purple, taupe quality. So if you have a lot of those similar types of colors, it'll generally feel a little more neutralized. Between this one and the last color we talked about, I think Elephant Gray has a little more risk versus reward to it. Where its unique purple quality could really look awesome if you play your cards right. The easy way of using it though is just surrounding it with extremely neutral natural woods, lighter furniture, even white ones where there won't be any risk of any complementary or competing undertones clashing with it. Where do we go from here though? I basically gave you three neutrals, one of which was a little bit different, but I really got a fine accent color choice for you next. And it's one that's loosely inspired by my love affair with a fair own ball color called arsenic, which is this electrifying green, but I think it's just so much fun. Webster Green by Benjamin Moore is perhaps more toned down, more of a shaded version of that, although it can be just as impactful as an accent color, especially amongst other neutrals that are more hanging out in the background. Webster Green has taken center stage, honey, okay? Kind of like me when I used to work on cruise ships. Humble brag. Compared to Arsenic, Webster Green feels more true to its green roots. And instead of having that slightly minty quality, this color is perhaps a bit deeper, but still feels quite clean. This is the color that you could use in that showroom, like a dining room, for example. I love spicing up the dining room because you're probably only going to use it for an hour or so every day, so you can get a little crazy with your color choices there. But I wouldn't call you crazy if you used this color. Quite the opposite, actually. Bit of a genius. We really need to talk about trim color options because the best way you're going to finish off your newly curated color palette is to commit to a color for your trim and baseboards. My light color option is Dove Wing, which is a paint color that's often used on walls, but within this palette is a baseboard choice. And of course you can also paint your doors, your window frames, even your ceilings, perhaps. I think it's a nicer alternative than going with a traditional bright stark white, just because it'll make your trim feel a bit more subtle and even more in the background. Sort of doubling down on the whole neutral thing. If you're a bit over the lighter woodwork vibe, not to worry, because I have a dark color option for you, and it's called Deep Creek. This is a chalky brown taupe that feels prestigious and smoky. And it's just a really fun alternative to white woodwork that I think would coordinate really nicely with the other colors here. Speaking of the other colors, here they are all together. Let me know what you think, and here's some more Benjamin Moore. I must be stopped.